where your mind is, what you are aware of, you live from that state. And just like the ideas of, of baptism and, and repenting, as he's using the words, are, are from a yogic perspective. Uh, when we think about attuning to our spiritual teachers, or when I think about Roy now, and I remember the times you know drinking tea with him or sitting here listening to him talk, and remembering, or you know, up in the greenhouse when Melissa and I would come to visit, remembering that that exchange and that clarity that I experienced by participating in that kind of interaction. Um, now I imagine it as though it is it is as real for me now as it was then, and that is my way of attuning to uh, my spiritual teacher or spiritual teachers or anyone who has a, a clear consciousness, right? That is why who you spend time with, the real reason why who you spend time with is so important is because you will tend to act like the people that you spend time with. You will tend to think like the people that you spend time with. When you spend time with people that have, mm, have maybe a broader perspective on life, you will tend to have a broader perspective on life. If I don't know, maybe you did this, maybe you didn't. When I was a kid, you know, I was into to music, and so I had posters of my rock star idols up on, up on the walls. And why do we do that? Because we want to be like those people, right? Um, people who are into martial arts, they have pictures of, uh, you know, Bruce Lee, I don't know, I'm not into martial arts that much, but you know, people that, that, they, that they kind of want to be like and emulate. Or you read books of people that you want to be like and emulate, and when you do that, you are then, in a sense, preparing yourself to become what they are and to know what they are. So you always have to think about, um, I want to encourage you not to get lost in uh, worship of a person or an idea. I want you to, when you think about or read books by Sri Yukteswar, Yogananda, or anyone that, that inspires your mind, think about, what are they? What were they like inside? What do they do? How do they behave? How do they act? How did they meditate? And if you do that, you will begin to recognize and know what they know, right? When I when I first met Mr. Davis, um, I, I was I think twenty, and um, when I heard him talk, it just made sense to me. I didn't sit in the back of the room and go, "What's he saying?" I don't quite get that. When he would talk, it was just like someone talking to me and reminding me of what I already knew. As a 20-year-old, I was still pretty stupid. So I had to work through a lot of like dumb ideas that were interspersed in that. But I, I, I felt and knew what he was saying. And if there were certain things that occurred that I did not understand, I didn't say, oh, well, I just don't get that and I never will. I thought to myself, I understood most of what he said which means I can probably understand the rest of it if I spend some time actually trying to work it out and think about it. So whenever you're, when you're studying and learning this stuff and you're, 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 you're trying to process new ideas, always have the feeling, the sense that you can understand it. Even if you don't right now, don't be the kind of glazed over individual that sometimes you see at seminars that you can tell they're getting talked at. They're not, it, it's not sinking in. So you always want to have a sense of curiosity. Number one, either you know what the person's saying, you just have to simply start applying it, or you don't understand, but you recognize that it is possible for you to understand that. So I've been criticized because of this, because people say, ah, oh, you think you can know what Yogananda knows you know, you, you, you think you can know what, what these people... Yes, I do think that. And Roy talked to people like that. He did not want individuals to think, no, you can't do that. What I got from my interactions with Mr. Davis was this, this deeper understanding is accessible to everyone. It's accessible to everyone. You just have to do the hard work because it is hard work sometimes, to realize it. But just like a kid grows up from a three-year-old to eventually a 40-year-old, 60-year-old, 70-year-old, if you engage the process, you will grow up 
and then you it will be natural to you just like whatever age you are now could your five-year-old self really appreciate where you are who you are right now right could your five-year-old self appreciate that Interesting. we we are you know we are passing through this experience most people get hung up on the human condition that's the other thing i got from mr davis quite often was that the human condition is a perplexing situation <laughs> but it's just something that we are passing through that we are growing through we appreciate it while we are here and we learn and we grow from it but as we discussed with these three worlds i think sri yukteswar described it this way he described it in such a way that like this physical creation is like this big condensed, packed in, matter, teeny-weeny little thing. The rest of us, our inner world, is like a giant balloon that this kind of material creation uh, carries. And that little material creation is minuscule compared to this huge inner world potential. And then that, that astral world of our dreams and our, our perceptions and our feelings and our emotions is teeny-weeny-weeny compared to that causal world of pure awareness. So if you, if you recognize, if you can start to recognize that you are moving through the stages of, <clears throat> of growth, spiritually speaking, <clears throat> and that this human life serves a purpose, but it is not the end goal. Again, we're not trying to like project ourselves into the future to get to a heaven that doesn't, uh, a heaven that we think exists in the future. But if we recognize that the purpose of our life is to awaken to this greater sense of ourselves, then we have to be able to accept that we have the capacity and the possibility to know and appreciate this. Again, it doesn't mean you can talk about it. It doesn't mean you can think about it. It means you can experience it, which is why going back to that idea of contemplating the ohm vibration, when you are hearing that sound and when you are absorbed in it, you are not aware of yourself. You're not. In the same way, I use this example over and over, when you're out in nature and you're simply aware of a beautiful sunrise or you know, fresh snow on the ground or you see you know, a turkey walking by and all you are aware of is just that experience. That is the same kind of experience that you are absorbed in when you are absorbed in meditation. There is no little you there. That is why they say um, the little self, the ego, isn't real. Because it's really not real. It comes and it goes. That is what we're aiming to experience here. 